Hey everyone. All right. We are back for another die challenge. So today I am going to be attempting to do a cornflower blue. Um, so again, it's going to be a synthetic versus natural. Now a few things up front. I do believe there probably is a dye that is more on the cornflower color but I don't believe so I'm working with fiber reactive dyes I'm not working with acid dyes so I should be upfront about that um, because I just have tons of fiber reactive dyes on hand because I usually um, do my textile dyeing with uh, bamboo fibers uh, linen organic cottons um, so I've never worked with acid dyes on wool before so I'm using fiber reactive dyes so far so good um, so I don't have a particular color that really kind of pinpoints that cornflower blue so I will be formulating just a little bit and then also too with my natural dye so now I do indigo vat dye but I'm not going to set up a whole indigo vat just to achieve this cornflower blue so I will be using it is like a liquid altered natural blue dye um, and it's very easy very accessible like very customer friendly um, it is probably the easiest no fuss <laughs> um natural dye <laughs> you're going to be able to use and um we're going to be over dyeing a bit so i'm going to be mixing some natural dyes together to try to achieve this cornflower blue um so yeah so today we are going to be using the yarn that i was thinking about using for the last uh, experiment and this is my vintage single it is an organic, non-superwash, single-ply yarn. It is so soft and squishy. I absolutely love this yarn. I will say the only downside to this yarn, in particular with natural dyes, is that because it's a single-ply and it's a non-superwash, it can have the tendency to stick to itself. And the more you wash it, the more you agitate it. And um, so then the more finicky it kind of gets. But nonetheless, it's still super squishy and soft and lovely. Um, but you just have to be very gentle with the washing process. Like, I, even though I would absolutely love to, I don't think that this organic non-superwash single ply is probably the best option for a natural dye that's going to require a lot of washing. Um, I think non-superwash in general can probably be a little bit finicky with continuous washing. So if you are using like something like this in particular, I would go a little bit light-handed with your natural dyes because I didn't mention this in the last video, uh, but one of the downsides to natural dyeing is that it does consume a, quite a bit of water um, because you do tend to have to rinse quite a bit, um, especially if you're trying to achieve those darker colors you are rinsing and rinsing and rinsing. Um, you know, a girlfriend of mine who also naturally dyes yarn, I mean, she dedicates like one whole day to washing her yarn out. And sometimes even after you think the dye is out, there might still be just a little bit of residue left. Um, so this is definitely not one of those <laughs> yarns that you wanna be washing and washing and washing and washing. So if you ever see my single plies, more than likely, they're probably going to be very light and fair in color. Um, it will be interesting to see how it takes with the synthetic dye because I have been contemplating on whether or not to start adding some synthetic dyed colorways 
to the shop just to have a variety. I know not everybody understands the longevity of natural dyes or the care of natural dyes. Um, so I think some people can kind of be deterred from them, a little bit scared to use them in their project because they really want the color to last. Maybe they're concerned with fading, things like this, or even washing. And, um, you know, so it might be nice just to have alternatives, just like sometimes it's nice to have a, an option for a super wash base and um, a non super wash base um in the shop for people who don't want to fuss with the non-super wash or maybe don't even like the feel of the non-super wash um as the time goes on for me i actually realize more and more how much i love the feel of non-super wash bases they almost have like this very very slight like velvety feeling that's the only way i can kind of describe it just this yeah this warm Mm, smooth comfy feeling um it's just it's lovely i absolutely love it so um hopefully i'll be adding some more non-super wash bases to the shop i'm glad to at least have two of these on hand right now i'll be restocking soon um so let's go ahead and you know seven minutes into this video i'll probably be editing it so when i'm saying this it may actually be like three minutes <laughs> um let's go ahead and get into the dyeing process all right so we have our synthetic bath going so far the color is looking gorgeous so I'm hoping that we can get this bath to exhaust a little bit more because then I think that the color that I'm really wanting to stick onto this non-super wash will really be there. Right now, as I'm kind of picking it up and putting it back and just making sure that the yarn is really good and saturated and we don't have any of those little white spots, I'm making sure to move my little zip tie. <laughs> um, uh, it is looking a bit more on the kind of sky blue side, but as you can see here, it has this really lovely soft cornflower blue color in my opinion. Um, do I think that some cornflower blues can tread a little bit more purple? Yes. Um, I do think that it would be worthwhile in the future if this was a color I really like to maybe just adjust that a tad bit more, but I'm excited to see what the results are because honestly, so far, my synthetic dye experiments have been going really well. So yeah, I'm excited about that. So you can see kind of how the color is pulling. But you can see the water does actually look more purple. And the water really isn't as hot as it is steaming. I don't know why it's steaming so much. There's not very much water in here. Um, but yeah, the water is looking a little bit more purple than I think the yarn is pooling. So that's why I'm saying I'm hoping that this can exhaust a little bit. Maybe to get a little bit more of those purpley blue shades into the yarn. So... All right, so we've got our natural dye going on here. So I should see you just here in, you know, a couple seconds. Okay, so this is my natural dye progression. We are rinsing it out. There's a little bit of wool wash in there. You can see the water isn't totally clear. Um, I really, I, I, I don't plan on using this in like a color work project or with something white or anything like that. Um, so I'm not really concerned with it having still just a little bit of dye. I rather, you know, keep the yarn's integrity in mind. Hey everyone! All right, so here is the reveal of both experiments. Can you guess which one is the synthetic and which one is the naturally dyed one? I do think it would be a little bit challenging maybe to assume. You would purely be assuming, I think. Um, 
unless, unless, I do think that this color probably is achievable, maybe, with a white indigo dip. Uh, maybe like a single indigo dip or a couple indigo dip from like a, a slowly exhausting vat. Maybe using the liquid indigo, um, you might be able to get close to a light blue like that. This, obviously, from my descriptions, this is the synthetic and this is the natural dyed. And again, to remind you guys, my goal was a cornflower blue. So here I'll put maybe a couple swatches or pictures of what cornflower blue to me is. And now I do think that there are variations of cornflower blue. So as long as I'm kind of falling within, you know, this spectrum here, I was happy. And to be honest, at first, I did think I did pretty good with getting a cornflower blue here, like that brighter cornflower blue. Like I even think um, like Sandus Garn, their cornflower blue runs a little bit more on the sky blue side than like the deeper um, kind of lilac -y blue side, unless I'm thinking of a different color because they do have a more brighter blue that it would be considered darker than this that may be the cornflower blue. But anyways, that's besides the point. Then when I dyed this one, this naturally dyed one, I actually thought it turned purple. So I thought that I totally failed on that one. But let's go ahead and talk about them separately. So again, we are using a 100% organic, organic goats certified um, single ply merino non superwash yarn for this 100 grams. So this yarn is like as delicate as delicate can get like because not only is it non superwash, but it's also single ply. Um, so because of that, you almost have to be like ultra careful with your dyeing process. You don't want to overstimulate it too much because it can slightly start to stick to itself and it will felt very easily. And um, I've definitely experienced this with this particular base. But I absolutely love this base so much that I just keep trying and trying to figure out how to avoid these things and we'll talk about that in just a little bit i have some clips that i took yesterday of them drying all right so this video is obviously inserted so you've already seen the yard but i want to show you something that i find very interesting and i'm hoping i can figure it out um i actually had contacted nomad about this which is where i get most of my yarn bases unless they, they just don't supply something that I need in particular. Um, so anyway, so look at these two, right? Okay, see this? And, okay. And then see this. Same bases, same bases. But do you see how smooth the right one looks in comparison to the left one um how the left one and if you see too the length this one is about two inches longer this one almost looks you know like some of the yarn got stuck together which is what is usually happening with me when i wash this out this was with the acid dyes so not the acid dyes, the synthetic dyes. So I actually didn't rinse this out very much at all. This one was done with the natural dye and I had to rinse this out quite a bit. I mean, I didn't like manhandle it, but I had to rinse it out quite a bit. Um, I will say there was a little bit more heat involved with this one. Um, this one also had the mordant. Um... There was a little bit, as I explained probably in a previous cl clip, there was a little bit back and forth from one pot to another. Um, and I don't think that I shocked this one going from hot to cold. Um, I actually let this dry quite a bit. But you can see here how it's just, it just looks like it's just kind of 
sticking together. And even when I go like this, you see? And this is what I deal with quite often with this yarn, which on one hand is kind of unfortunate, but on the other hand, I always wonder to myself, am I doing something wrong? Um, let's see up close here. But this one, it's not like that. I mean, it almost looks like it's smoothed out, um, conditioned. <laughs> I used the wool wash on both of them. So I don't know. Uh, I really don't. Um, <laughs> I'm hoping I can figure it out. Because the one on the right definitely looks better than the one on the left, doesn't it? Like, you know, if you're going to buy these, wouldn't you much rather buy the pretty one on the right than the one on the left? So the synthetic, I mixed a brighter blue base and I mixed like a, I guess, something in the purple family, right? Um, to try to get a blue that had a slight undertone of a purple because I feel like that is what cornflower blue is. Um, you can kind of go on the brighter side or the lighter side like I already shared with some of these pictures here. And so I thought I kind of achieved maybe that lighter, brighter side of cornflower blue and I thought I was pretty darn close. As it started drying, though, it lightens up a lot. And I think, you know, if you dye yarn, then you know this already. Um, and so the more it dried, the more I realized it reminded me a bit more of a sky blue. Or um, I'll correct myself if I'm wrong in this description, but even kind of a Parisian blue, like I think of like Marie Antoinette, you know, like the movie um, where like Claire Danes is, you know, I, I think she wore like this, yeah, like light, almost sky blue type dress in that movie at some point. That's kind of what this reminds me of, like this French country feel. Um, it, it's absolutely beautiful, but it definitely is lacking some of those more purpley undertones in the blue that I think it really needs. I think I actually could have gone a bit more heavy with my purple. My biggest fear was that it was going to go purple. So I wanted to be more heavy with the blue and lighter with the purple um, because I am not a purple person. A purple does not look good on me. It's just not a color that I gravitate towards. Um, even when I used to dye textiles, um, I would always get requests for purple, 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 anything in the purple family. And it was one of those scarves that I never was really a huge fan of, but man, did they sell out. Um, so I know people love purple, so don't take it offensively. I'm just not a purple person, but I do like lavender. I like lilacs, lavenders, periwinkles. I do like these colors. I think they're very pretty. I actually wish that they looked better on me. So my worst fear was that this experiment was going to go purple because then I wouldn't be able to keep this yarn for myself and I would end up putting it on my shop and hopefully you purple lovers would love it and purchase it. So I will say I do think that there could have been some more purple undertones um, in this synthetic bath. Um, again, the synthetic process is just very easy. You know, you're soaking your yarn, you're formulating your dyes, you're adding your dyes to the pot. Now, it exhausted almost all the way. The water was like the faintest color blue. Um, all I had to do after that was I just rinsed it once with water and then I rinsed it again with a little bit of wool wash and then I spun dried it and hung it up to dry. As simple as that. Super easy. Um, you don't use very much water, but the downside is that you are using the chemical dyes and so you are disposing of that water and you're obviously feeding into the consumerism of these um, chemicals and um, you know so those are the downsides right of working with synthetic so now moving on to the natural dye because we did talk about a lot of positive right you know is that they're they're quick 
They're easy, they're easy to formulate. You can reproduce the colors really well. You can improve on the colors. So like next time, all I would do is I would go more heavy with the purple and a little bit lighter on the blue and maybe I would actually get the, the color I was really, really trying to achieve. Um, so that's kind of easy enough. Natural dyes, my friend. Oof. If you are not patient and adventurous, <laughs> um, natural dyes can really, you know, get you creatively, um, especially when you have something envisioned. And that's why I remember one of my girlfriends, she just says, you know, I, I make up a pot of dye and whatever I get from it, I get from it. And I just, I accept it for what it is. And it's beautiful no matter what. And I agree. It is beautiful no matter what, even if it's not what you were going for, more than likely it's still going to be gorgeous. Right. So, you know, I, you got to kind of give it that you have to have that, that freedom. And also to a little side note, Aren't these little flowers just the cutest? They just add so much to this beautiful yarn. Um, my four-year-old, uh, he saw me taking pictures of the yarn out in the backyard. So he came and he started picking the little flowers, my sweet little boy. Um, so anyways, so the natural dye. Again, the process is a lot longer. Um, I have to soak the yarn. Then I have to mordant the yarn. I mordanted this time with 12%. I think last video I mordant with 8%. Um, and I did that just because I really wanted to make sure that the dye really stuck because this is a non super wash. Whereas before I was using a super wash base, so I wasn't as concerned with the dye really getting in there. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I mordanted a little bit better this time. So I did use a 12% weight of fiber of alum. And I did notice I had a bit of an accent, alum, in the last video when I was saying alum. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so um, I mixed up my, um, what would be my purplier base and my blue base, and I actually mixed them together, thinking for some reason that this would work. If I mixed my purple base and my blue base together like paint, then I'm going to get the cornflower blue base that I was seeking. Well, I didn't take into consideration the components of my blue base and how it could manipulate or affect my truly like 100% natural from its origin, um, very pH sensitive dye bath. And so I pretty much wasted wasted whatever blue dye um, I had put into that pot um, because it didn't do anything. It didn't absolutely did nothing. Maybe if I added way more, it would have done something, but it did nothing. If anything, it just disrupted my pH of my bath. And um, so I had to try a different route. So I decided to just go ahead and over dye. So after I uh, mordanted the yarn and I extracted my purple base, which to achieve the purple that I wanted, I did have to make the bath a little bit more alkaline than acidic. And this is what one of the problems was with adding my blue base in there is that it made my bath more acidic. So I went ahead and I made my blue base separately. Um, I added a little bit and then I ended up feeling like it was too light um, and I added about another gram of that particular dye and um, to try to get the blue that I thought would be bright enough to not be too affected by the purple base that I was getting ready to over dye it with again. My fear was that it was going to turn purple. My purple base was going to be so strong that it was going to overpower my blue. Um, so, and that's what I thought actually happened. So once my blue base was done um, and the blue was pretty much exhausted from the bath and I felt like my purple was extracted, I went ahead and I over dyed it. And immediately, as soon as I dunk the hank in there, it turned royal purple. It was such a blue violet that I wanted to smack myself. I was like, oh no, this is not what I wanted. 
Um, so I almost immediately took it out. I made sure anyways that that purple had somewhat coated the yarn before I took it out because I didn't want it to be too stripy and variegated. So then I immediately dunked it back into the pan that the blue dye had been exhausted from. So at this point, it's just hot water, right? And um, so some of the purple dye immediately, you know, started to run off of the yarn. Um, and I sat it in there and I thought to myself, what do I do? What do I do? I don't want this to be purple. So I ended up adding a, <laughs> a bit more blue. I don't even know the grammage because I just kind of poured it in there. Um, I don't think it was tons. It wasn't tons, but it was definitely more. It was, so I probably doubled my blue recipe. So that I should probably keep that in mind, actually, if I try to reformulate this again, is I need to double the blue. Then I was like, okay, I need to make sure that the purple is really saturated throughout the yarn so now that there's a bit more blue in here, let me go ahead and dunk it back into the purple, squeeze the dye into the yarn, make sure it really gets in there, and then I'll transfer it back just to make sure that it's not too heavy in purple. I'm not letting it sit in there for too long to absorb too much of the purple. At this point, it was purple. It was it was like a, yeah, like I said, it was like a royal blue, blue lavender color. And I figured, you know what, whatever, I'll just sell it on my shop. And um, well, as I let it cool and then accepted the fact, and then I started rinsing it out, a lot of the purple slowly started kind of rinsing off. And this beautiful cornflower blue emerged. And I will say, I initially thought that this was cornflower blue. And then once I dried this, I realized that my natural dye experiment actually preceded my synthetic dyeing experiment. And although it wasn't on accident, it was sort of on accident. It was a pleasant surprise let's put it that way although I, ha I had a very good idea that I was gonna get cornflower blue I really thought I was like okay my color bases are good I think that the colors are rich enough I think that you know I use the right amount of dye I think these colors together are really gonna give me a cornflower blue with natural dye it really just is kind of a you know it's a mystery and um but then when that purple hit, man, I was like, oh, man, what just happened? <laughs> so I will say that I was pleasantly surprised as it was drying that it slowly gave me this beautiful cornflower blue. Now I will say there is a bit more purple in the. I wish that it had... I wish that this one just had a little bit of the brightness of this one. And I'm wondering if maybe I up my percentage of blue even just a little bit more and maybe lower my percentage of the purple just a little bit more if I would get exactly what I'm looking for. I just want this to be just a little bit brighter. But like I said, with natural dyes, that can be very difficult. What was the example last time? Sometimes synthetics can kind of scream at you, but natural dyes tend to sing at you. And I think, again, this is a perfect example. Now, do I think this is screaming? Absolutely not. I think this is gorgeous. I think it's feminine. I think it's it's light and soft and um, delicate looking. It does have a brighter look to it. Um, I think this one just has a much more muted, soft, uh, mature look to it. One thing that I do think is really cool that happened with the natural dye, and actually, as I'm looking at the camera now, it actually does look a little bit more purple. So you can see here, there's these areas that actually picked up more on the purple. See, that picked a bit more up on the blue. 
there's these beautiful just little ringlets of purple and it really is just so lovely see like this purple here and then there's a bit more blue here I do think that this is an absolutely beautiful base and I think anybody would be happy with that base as long as they you know liked kind of that blue purple color I think this would be beautiful knitted up I think it would have a lot of beautiful little variegations to it that would just be gorgeous so now I was planning to make a particular beanie hat with one of these this is the pattern I'm looking at or I'll put it over there um, and I just thought it would be gorgeous in one of these colors I think this might be a little bit too purple for my skin tone um, it's absolutely gorgeous I'm undecided on whether or not I'm gonna pop it up on my shop or not or if I'm gonna save it for a potential shawl project oh. this is my natural dye versus synthetic cornflower blue edition I definitely think there is room for improvement and formulation, you know, adjusting, um, but it is what it is. And then I did end up having a little bit of an exhaust bath, bath of this. So I ended up throwing in, let's show what happened with my exhaust bath. <laughs> this is fun. I ended up throwing in two bulky weights and I ended up getting like such a fair lavender color um, I didn't mordant it I, I didn't want to go through that so just however the lavender kind of absorbed into the yarn which really wasn't like that much at all and then I was like you know what all right so we've already started dyeing this yarn let's go ahead let's have fun with <laughs> some speckling I've never speckled with my fiber reactive dyes I don't think they're probably the best for speckling um, but nonetheless I popped them in a pan um, like you see most people doing speckling with and I just picked out a few different colors and yeah so <laughs> this is what happened with my exhaust dye from this um, oh, that just that looks so pretty there oh, why doesn't this color look nice on me <laughs> so anyway so I figured you know what I might make my daughter a pillow or something to throw on her bed or I don't know I'm thinking I might make something for my daughter if I have enough to make her like a little chunky vest for the winter um, I think that would be really cute um, but I almost think I might have too much to do that um, so I am thinking I might make her a pillowcase I just think that would be so much more soft and squishy and um, there's definitely not enough here to like make her like a little throw blanket it's just 200 grams I think each 100 gram has each 100 grams has like 109 yards so it's really not much at all I'm gonna gauge swatch and see um, what needle I can use but that is getting off topic so anyways so let's put back my beautiful experiment here so lovely <laughs> so anyway so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video let me know if you have any questions down below please suggest colors for future videos synthetic versus natural dyeing this really helps me to kind of increase my knowledge and my palette uh, gives me you know different variations of colors that I can do for my own business for my own personal knitting and it's just fun it, you know it, I'm trying to think what my next challenge is going to be actually um, and I, I just there's not a color um, that really comes to mind immediately um, but I definitely do want to do another one of these once I get a little bit more yarn in because the yarn that I currently have that's undyed is meant for me to dye up for my shop update. Um, so hopefully my shop update will be, what are we in? We're almost in August, so I'm hoping it'll be updated by the end of August. That's kind of my goal because um, I'll probably be dying it that first week of August so yeah so look forward to that if you're interested in and it'll all be naturally dyed it won't be synthetically dyed any of it um, so if you are interested in naturally dyed yarn 
I will have that available for you. I have some luscious, oh, I have some luscious bases and they're just, oh, they're so, they're so, so beautiful and so cozy. I want to knit with them myself, but I only have so much yarn to offer you guys. So either I hoard it all for myself or I sell it to you with hopes that I can, you know, continue this beautiful hobby and sharing this art with you. And um, so anyway, so hopefully you enjoyed this video. Like it if you like it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, give me video ideas down below of dyeing, even if you want me to do like a how-to video or something like that with natural dyes or working with fiber reactive dyes. I might be open to something like that as well. So I will talk to you later. All right. Bye, everyone.